everybody, my name is Spamos and welcome to Discover Egypt King Tut's Tomb. This is a very short VR experience where we get to explore the tomb of King Tut himself. And also as a fun fact, this was the second VR experience I ever personally experienced. I want to share it with you guys, so without any more stalling, let's begin! So welcome to Discover Egypt King Tut's Tomb. We have Discovery Mode and Treasure Hunt. Now the last time I played this, Treasure Hunt wasn't a thing. I want to go into Discover Mode because I think I know what it's going to be. There we go. Welcome to the tomb of King Tutankhamun, the Thank most well-known pharaoh in the history of ancient Egypt. It is the best preserved tomb among all Egyptian archaeological discoveries. Feel free to look around and see what each item signified to ancient Egyptian culture. Thank you. Got it. Okay, so here we go. We're underway. Welcome to the tomb, everybody. There's the entrance. It's very bright outside, but we're going to go deeper inside. So this was the second VR... How do I move? Oh, oh, to the light beams. The light... There we go. The light beams will beam us in. So this was the second VR experience I ever experienced. I didn't do it on camera. I was all by myself, but I was just freaked out by... Well, I was so new to VR. And the potentials of this were so mind-blowing to me. So here we go, we have these information nodes. How do I use them? We chat and touch? This is a sistrum. It was an ancient Egyptian rattle. Playing this instrument at funeral ceremonies was said to help a person's spirit exit their body. What's a sistrum? All I see is this like sleigh thing here. Is that the rattle thing? That thing there? Is that a sistrum? I don't know how it would rattle, unless there's some sand inside of it. But look at this. Like, I just love how you swoosh the lights around and the darkness just kind of creeps in and out of, sh of shots. So, of course, this is King Tut's tomb, how it was found when it still had all of its loot and booty inside of it. It's since, obviously, been uh, completely excavated and, and taken. Look at, there's like a room back there. Can I not go through there? Okay, well, let's follow the little lights on the ground. That's creepy how they just come up the darkness and... <laughs> Hi. So what's this thing? Oh, is that made out of marble? These Oop. neck rests were not only used with pillows to support the heads of royalty, but they were also thought to act as dream conduits that allowed communication with the gods during sleep. Well, there you go. That's a better lighting of the situation. I should just, like, strap this to my head. Wear it like a, a, a miner's helmet. So that's a neck rest. You'd kind of like rest your face on that with your neck. Or is it like some sort of ginormous satellite dish so we can talk to those aliens up above, get some more help building these pyramids? Am I right? Am I right? Or whatever. Okay. Hey, Sphinx. Are they Sphinxes? Jackals? I forgot what they're called. Aha! Now we're in the burial chamber itself. Now, we recently did Great Pyramids VR, the pyramids uh, uh, in Giza, and we saw empty pyramids. It's so nice to see King Tut's tomb with everything in situ, because you get an idea of just, well, what it was like when it was found. Now, this room is very interesting, because it, it made news, was it, what, last year, 2016? They did 3D scans of all of this room, like all of these lovely war mosaics and uh, effigies, whatever you want to call them. And they believed there was a doorway, and I swear the doorway was behind that wall there ahead of us. They haven't dug, they haven't drilled, they haven't got permission to, so they can't confirm nor deny. But anyway, look at these. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, King Tut Tut himself. Let me get a better view of this one. Oh wait, let's listen to this, this person. This is Tutankhamun's burial encasement. He resides within three coffins of decreasing size. Each coffin is beautifully ornate and built to last. Built to last until some dodgy, dodgy museum curators, they knocked off his beard. And then they thought, you know what? I'll super glue it back on. Nobody will ever tell the difference. True story. If you weren't aware of that, just Google it. It's laughable at as, just as much as it is shocking. There you go. Look at him. Sleeping there like a baby. So there's three different sarcophaguses decreasing in sizes. So this one, you can see this on display in museum. I don't know which museum. I think it was. I don't know. I'm a fan of the colours. I'm loving the gold and the blue. It's very regal. It's very nice. What's this on there? Hang on, there's something around the corner here. What's this? Oh, it's difficult to reach you. Jewelry such as this necklace was buried here in hopes that it would be carried on to the afterlife with those who are buried. 
Look how fancy that, look at that. Two lovely necklaces on the ground. I guess in case they lost one of them, they got a backup one, hey? That's the thing, like, I, they had a very funny way of thought in some ways. Like, they would literally pack, like, ships and stuff, ready to build, so that when the afterlife, and they're, obviously they're trap servants down here too, so in the afterlife, like, they have access to all these things they're going to need, because of course in the afterlife they haven't got their own boatyards, so you've got to bring your own boat kind of thing. <laughs> There's much greater meaning, I'm a dumbass, and I don't know the history as well as I would like to, but my friend Connie, she's amazing at this, you can ask her anything, she'll tell you everything behind it. But it's thanks to this, a tomb like this, that we have a, a perfectly preserved Egyptian boat, because it is quite literally flat packed in the burial chamber, like ready for use. All they had to do was assemble it, and then boom, no decay, nothing, an intact Egyptian boat. Okay. Let me turn around. It's still creepy how you're staring at me. I see you pointing my, my, my finger at you. So we're gonna make our way this way to the loot room, I believe. So here we go, Wabushi. Oh, hi. Aren't you adorable? Very creepy like that. I don't know where that light source is supposedly coming from. I guess it's just to help me look around. Oh, there's a little mini little boat. That's not the one I know about. Hang on. That's better. All right, let's step inside and have a little look around. There's lots of these little miniature boats. What are these? Voice lady, tell me. Model boats were often thought to help a person's spirit move into the afterlife. There you have it. Model boats were often thought to help spirits move on into the afterlife. And just in case they can't pick which boat they want, they have several to pick from. Or the, maybe some are for their friends. Look at you. You're gorgeous. I like that. I swear I've seen some of these in the British Museum in London. And I went... Oh, last year, 2016. Uh, it was a birthday present, actually. Uh, I went, and they, they, so much cool stuff on display. So much cool stuff. The, oh, there goes my hands. <laughs> no touching hands. Okay, I can't, I can't reach this, though. Here we go. This boat looks to have symbolized the spiritual journey of a portion of Tutankhamun's entire family. Oh, there you go. Special boat right there. Seems to have done something or another for their family. Bloop, bloop, come bloop away. There you go. Thanks, blue bitch. There's not a node to say what this this cute little guy is. And what is that? Biggest thing in the room and they don't identify it? Is it like a, an incense burner or something? Hang on, let me back up. Is it like some sort of Egyptian TARDIS? Like that's how they got to the afterlife. It went that it made that sound that sound that they make and then it just disappeared. If anybody in the comments knows what that is, please tell me. I mean, it looks very nice. Number one, how did they get it in here? It's bigger than the doorway. And they must have assembled it in here. Clearly made out of gold. I don't know what else. But anyway, we've come to the end of our little mini adventure. I told you it was a short experience. It truly is. But because we kind of got some, an Egypt vibe going on just now, I really wanted to share it with you guys. I really like this. And I think it's just... It's neat. Again, it's the power of virtual reality and showing you in, in a historical context what you otherwise can't see. Like, these treasures have been long removed from this chamber. If you go here today, yeah, you'll get the nice pictures on the walls in here. But you won't get King Tut's coffin there. His sarcophagus. Sorry, I want to be formal and correct. You won't get that cute little guy. I love his ears. Oh, I love the shadow. Ooh, evil. I love virtual reality, I love history, and I love this coming together of these two mediums that I love so much. I want to go to Egypt, I want to check out these places myself. One day, I hope to do so. But until then, thanks to virtual reality, as well as documentaries and books, we can all piece together a little bit more of the understanding. And of course, you can read words in books, you can look at photographs, and that's great, and that can teach you so much. But being here in virtual reality, it is... It gives context to everything. Like, I now can visualize in real space how large, or rather how small, this all is. And the door frames. Or like the Pyramid of Giza, why did my torch break? Or the Pyramid of Giza crawling around those small crawl spaces. It makes it more understandable and real, and I love it. I hope you do as well. Anyway, let's take this uh, mask off, and I'll say my goodbye. Oh, hi. 
Well, I've pretty much already said all I want to say, so on that bombshell, if you have enjoyed this, leave me a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. I would love to hear what you have to say about this. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.